Welcome to Drafting, Unit 4, in which we will be talking about tables and figures. After watching this module, you will know how tables and figures should be formatted. You will know when to use notes and when to use footnotes in tables and figures. And you will see how tables and figures are cited in the text. This is an example of a typical table that you might find in an ISO standard. A table can be used for presenting information in a clear way. But to do this, certain rules should be followed. All tables need to have a title or else the user won't know what the table shows. Tables are numbered consecutively through the document as one, two, three, etc. Then in the annexes, they are numbered A1, A2, A3, etc corresponding to the letter of the annex. Tables normally begin with a header row, which should be presented in bold type. The title of each column should start with a capital letter, like defect and maximum in this example. The body of the table shows the information you want to present. And then finally, the footer row can be used for notes and footnotes. Figures are used a lot in standards, and it's very important to know how to present them correctly. This is an example of a typical figure. It follows similar rules to tables, such as always having a figure number and title. You can see that the key comes in between the figure and the title, and that key items are written without initial capitals and without full stops. Now we'll talk a little bit about notes and footnotes in figures, which follow the same rules as in tables. Notes apply to the whole figure and are not allowed to contain requirements, permissions or recommendations. Footnotes refer to a specific element of the figure and they can contain requirements, permissions or recommendations for that specific element. Remember also that all figures and tables must be cited somewhere in the text. Otherwise, the user won't know what they show. Figures can be divided into subfigures if necessary, but there should only be one key for the entire figure, not one for each of the subfigures. And each subfigure should be explained by the use of a subtitle, as shown in this example. As far as possible, text should be avoided in figures. Keep in mind that international standards are often translated and this job is made harder if there is text in the figures. The exception to this rule is flowcharts, which are commonly used to show processes in a more visual way. Be sure to check these carefully for any typographical errors and make sure they use Cambria font and language that is consistent with the rest of the document. If you're using a figure that has been produced by another organisation or a private company, you need to make sure that you have permission to use it. This information is provided to the technical programme manager of your committee. Then you can add a note to the figure as in the example shown here. Make sure that your figures are of good quality and high resolution with clear lines. Keep figures concise and don't clutter them up with any unnecessary detail. Figures should also look consistent within the same document, so try to avoid having different figures from different sources. And of course, make sure you haven't forgotten anything from the figure or from the key. Finally, send your figures in a revisable format as soon as you can to avoid any delays further along the line. For information on acceptable figure formats and guidance on other aspects of drafting, visit the link given in the course information. Thank you.